is, we are told, or we feel like we need to choose between proving that on principle whether we're doing the right thing or whether it'll be a large tangible benefit. Today, we are lucky enough to propose a motion that where we will be proving both. We'll show you that not only is it the right thing to do, but it's also for the best thing for our society. In order to prove this, we will show you that firstly there's an obligation, secondly there's a need, and thirdly that our policy is the best way to fulfill the need and benefit society. Under the proposed motion, we would like to look at university graduates as people who have obtained their degree and are specifically authorised in, the in theoretical institutions. We are excusing FET colleges and technicons from today's debate. Furthermore, we'd like to look at community service as an action that benefits the community. We would like to give graduates the opportunity to choose the type of service that they wish to do and where it is that they would like to do so. But, um, so this could be in an international <coughs> hospital or in rural areas. While we would like to best suit their preferences, we also see that we can't always give them their first choice, and in this case, the relevant institution can decide where the university graduate will go and complete this community service. In order to prove to you our case today, I, Chesh Nidina, will be speaking on the issues of obligation and the second group. Our second speaker, Emma Passenger, will be speaking on the issues of education and cohesion. So I'd now like to move on to my first um, issue, and here I'll be looking at obligation. What I'm going to prove to you is that students have an obligation to give back, specifically to the state. And we believe also that this is the mor morally the right thing for students to do. So referring back to my definition, let's just take a quick recap on the nature of community service. And we see that it's giving back, it's serving, it's making a contribution. And we see that when we're looking firstly at the state, we think that students use state facilities, they use the roads provided by the government. They can go to government schools. They invest with the privileges of the security service that the government provides to the people. And in cases of bursaries, where the government actually funds yeah, yeah. students to go through this uh, university. So we see that inherently, these students have an obligation to the state, to give back to the state, and to um, give it through the, through the people who need it most. We see that this is similar to the principle of taxes, and this is where people pay for services. And in a similar way, we see that students are paying back for the privileges that the government are giving us, for the basic services that have been provided. And they're doing this through addressing the needs of the people, which we see as a benefit in today's um, case. So I've proven to you that they have that these university students actually have an obligation to the state, which provided them with these basic services and who they should give back to. Tell me why that's not. Either the person is privileged and has paid handsomely for those services through their tax, or they're poor, in which case they are owed services by society because of their lack of opportunity. Thank you, sir. We are looking at university graduates in today's debate. These are people who have, in most cases, not entered the workforce yet. And we know that taxes are paid by people who have worked in society through their salary. So we see that firstly, taxes do not apply to university students at the current stage, and we'd like to have them pay back their services through this source of community service. And secondly, for poor people, poor people do not not have an obligation to the state just because of their financial status in society. We feel that they have just as much obligation as rich people, and therefore we still stand by the fact that all university students have this obligation to the state who has provided for them. So now I'd like to move on to the second sub-issue on the obligation, and that's that it's the morally, principally the right thing to do. Now, getting into university is often a random, lucky thing to get into. We see that it's very specific towards rich or middle class people who can afford to pay for university, people who have been afforded opportunities, or who are simply born into the right family. We see that poor people with bursaries, um, they, they have to do community service often as a part of this bursary, and they're already obliged to pay back. Now, as a society, we have, um, we, in life orientation, we've been taught morals, we've been taught compassion, we've been taught that people actually care, and that we should care Jeez. for one another in society, no thank you. And we see that these same morals that are entrenched in us by the state are the way that the state expects us to act. And we feel that it's morally correct for an individual <coughs> to be granted this opportunity to give back to the community, to give back to providing people's needs. And this ties in nicely with my next issue of needs. But before I move on, I'd just like to 
reinstate, but I've proven to you that students do have the obligation to give back to the state and that they are likely to because they are morally, it is the right thing to do. So now I would like to move on to my second issue, that being of the And here I'll be proving to you that community service meets the direct needs and the long-term needs of communities. So let's look at the status quo in South Africa at the moment. And we see that several communities are struggling. They're disadvantaged communities, underprivileged communities. And we see that there are two essential problems causing this. We see firstly there's a lack of education and skills of the people from these disadvantaged communities. And the second problem we can identify in society is that there are lack of effective means to address this. And we look at this on two grounds. Firstly, that people who have qualified don't often choose to go to these rural underprivileged areas. And secondly, because community service projects are not directed to address these needs. We see that the current ones in place are often for people who have committed crimes, prisoners, to go to communities and do menial tasks such as picking up litter. So what we would like to do is that we'd like to um, address conserve to address these needs. And we said this will have a twofold benefit. Firstly, on the provision of direct skills, and secondly, on passing on long-term skills to the people. So let's take a look at the first one of, of provision of direct skills. Now we see that by nature of these, these students being university graduates, having completed a degree, having obtained skills through the university institution, we see that careers such as engineers can build wells in communities which can provide water to people. We see that careers such as teachers can teach people and provide education. And we see people like lawyers can even teach us skills such as debating, what we're doing right now, which encourages critical thinking in society. But not only these mainstream careers can provide these to the people. And we see that careers such as philosophers can teach people their, their um, learnings and can inspire people to do great things with their lives, can teach simple skills like language, breaking language barriers between people. So what I've shown you here is that firstly, university students are qualified and they are, um, uh, they are able to, they have acquired skills so they can transfer these. Secondly, that all students are needed in various different spheres from building wells to teaching people. And thirdly, that by putting these, these graduates in a community service based project, they are actually addressing the needs of the people. But today, we'd not only like to provide for that short term, that one year, We'd like to create a long-term impact on the future. In rural areas, we see that there are several smart people, people who have the ability to progress in society, who just can't afford to get far in life, who can't afford university or a decent education, but they have capacity. And we as side proposition beg to pass these skills on to people. We see that they can be learned by example the ability to build wealth. They can teach others what they've learned through the university students, and they can pass on the skill of debating um, to other people so that they can interact in live debates and in discussions. So we see that not only are we providing for direct needs, but we're passing on skills for the future, for sustainable growth in those communities. So what have I proven to you? I've proven to you that there is an obligation of these students and not only and also a need in communities and therefore we stand by the motion.